character needs no epitaph. You can bury a man, but character will beat the horse back from the graveyard. A golden character needs no gliding. Therefore, it is human to stand with a crowd, and it is divine to stand alone. It is human to stand with a crowd, but it is divine to stand alone. People know you by your reputation, but God knows you by your character. Character is a mirror that shows your true image. It's not what you say. It's not what you pretend <clears throat> in the public. Character is a mirror that shows your true image. And I pray that every man, every woman in this auditorium will begin to deal with his or her character. That we will not bring shame to the name of the Lord. That you will not be confused. That you will not be bought over by demons and agents of Satan. But you keep your eyes straight and believe that the Lord is God. Our topic this morning is a Christian attitude to persecution. What kind of attitude do we need to portray as beat when we are persecuted? A word is enough for a wise. It is easy for us to claim I'm a Christian, but when it comes to a reality of showing forth the fruit of Christianity, can we find one of them in your life, in my life? When others are persecuted, we can always pass a comment. Maybe he did something like that. But are you sure? Judge no man, but pray for all men. Judge no man so you don't put coal on your head. Your sin will find you out. No matter what you say behind the doors, with your group, when you go out for your so-called fellowship, God hears them. For God sees Every move we make, God hears the heartbeat of us as he hears the, he hears a voice. And God sees every intention of ours, even as he sees our actions. My prayer is that none of us will die as a sinner, even though you have claimed to be a child of God. Don't be bought over by people who have chosen to back off from the reality of the cross. Because of what? Money. May God have mercy upon everyone. When you are persecuted, when people speak ill of you, when they falsely accuse you because they feel like condemning you, how are you supposed to behave? The Bible told us in the book of Psalms, turn your Bible in the book of Psalms 119, verse 161 and verses 162. Psalms 119, Verses 161 and 162. Princes persecute me without a cause, but my heart stands in the awe of your word. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. When you are persecuted, stand at the awe of, the God's, of God's word. Stand in the wonder of God's word. Don't open your mouth and begin to defend yourself. Today, many people are very defensive. When you're prosecuted, when somebody says something about them, they try to defend, fight. Sorry. A real Christian must not defend. Leave God to defend you. A real Christian, if you know that you are right in what you have done, you don't need to bother about what anybody thinks about it. Therefore, it is not who is right. It is what is right in life. Secondly, another character, when you are prosecuted, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Bible declared in the book of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus spoke in verse 11 and 12, it says, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you, against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Yes. Rejoice that you are persecuted falsely. Rejoice because you know your God will never leave you nor forsake you. Rejoice because there are persecuted people who had gone before you. You are not the first and you will not be the last. Thirdly, when they persecute you, do pray for your persecutors. Don't charge your persecutors, but pray for them. Pray for them that they may come out from their deception 
and embrace the truth of the Lord. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 44, it says, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for them. Pray for them. That's what the Bible says. Pray for them. It didn't say accuse them. It didn't say wipe them back. It didn't say kick them. It said pray for them. And when you're praying this prayer, please don't pray prayer of witchcraft. Some people, when they're persecuted, they say they want to pray for their persecutors. They say, Lord, you know I didn't do anything. Father, kill them. That is prayer of witchcraft. Rather, pray that God's mercy will be upon them. Pray that God's grace will be extended to them one more time. Pray that God will bring them back to the fold. Pray that God's hand will never depart from their lives. Pray. Because when they have come back to the truth, they will regret their actions. They will regret it. Next. When you are persecuted, rejoice and leap for joy. Luke chapter 6, verse 22 through 23. Rejoice and leap for joy. When you are persecuted, always rejoice. What a joy that you are counted worthy to be persecuted for Christ's sake. That is why when you are persecuted, rejoice and leap for joy. Here Luke, Dr. Luke made it clear for us how we need to behave ourselves when we are persecuted. He said in verses 22 to 23, Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, rejoice in that, that day and live for joy. For indeed your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. Rejoice when they have cast your name, put your name in the internet, try to destroy your image. Don't worry. Because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Because you know whom you follow. You don't follow the God of the world. You don't follow the God of stomach. Those who want to enter into ministry because of money to feed your stomach or feed your families. You entered because you were called. Not only called, you were chosen to do God's work. And I say nothing, absolute nothing, must separate you from the call of God upon your life. I always say it. And I share this with you. Anybody who tells you, wow, Pastor is so discouraged. Tell him it's not that pastor because he knows his redeemer lives. Because I know who called me. His name is Jesus. Therefore, I'm not afraid. But make sure you live righteously. Make sure you don't live in sin. That's one thing. God's people. Next. When you're persecuted, John chapter 16 verse 33 says, Maintain peace in your heart and be cheerful. Maintain peace in your heart. The peace that passes all understanding. Jesus said there, in that John 16, 33, says, In the world you have tribulation, you have persecution, but be cheerful, I have come, overcome the world, and enjoy the peace. That peace does not come because you own millions of dollars. That peace does not come because you look at your bank account and see a hefty amount of money. That peace comes from the Prince of Peace. The peace that comes from the Lord. The peace that comes in regardless of the situation that you're going through. That's the peace we're talking about. That's the peace that will take you from where you are to a new level. That's the peace. Next. When you are persecuted, don't stop preaching. Don't stop teaching the word of God. Continue in the work of God you're doing. In the book of Acts chapter 5, verses 40, 41 and 42. And also in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 4, the Bible said that the disciples did not stop preaching or teaching the word of God, even though they were persecuted, they pressed on. A quitter never wins, but a winner never quits. They pressed on. And I tell you, what made them to press on is because they were living right. Do you know why your faith is always up and down? Because you know you don't live right. Do you know why you believe gossip? Because you know you're a gossiper. If you're a man or woman who had encounter with God, a man or woman who has handshake with the Lord, no word from any man can shake up your faith. What you are not sure of, you can go and settle that and say, brother, sister, what I heard about you is shaking my faith. I want to clarify, did you do this or not? 
but we don't do. That what we do is we help the gossipers to spread the news. For what? You send your email, everybody. You are helping Satan to spread the news. Next thing is, yeah, I had. Yes, I had. Yes, I had. You forget to know. Your story is also hard. God's people. It is time for us to continue what God, God called us to do. Do you know why you're persecuted? Because devil wants to stop the spreading of the good news of Christ. Do you know why you're persecuted? Because devil wants to challenge your faith. Anything that you believe on will be challenged. Anything you stand for will be challenged. But it takes Jesus in your life to say, look, I know whom I believed. For I am persuaded that he is able to keep all that I committed into his hands against that day. Can I hear amen? That's my God. That's my God. Next. When you are persecuted, make sure you love your persecutors. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 3. If we love those who love us, it is human. But you need to love those who hate you, and that is supernatural. It is natural to love those who love you, but it's supernatural to love those who hate you. Love that bears all things. Love that is, that is not easily inflated. Love that carries all burdens. Love that do not count on the wrong done to it. Yes, that's how it goes. Listen carefully. Three years back, a brother, they left the church for no reason. Guess what? They come back to beg that they are sorry. This happened on Friday. Yes. God's people. If you live, Bible said, if the word of a man is pleasing unto God, he will make your enemies to bow. Can I hear amen? God's people. God brought you into this church. For you to grow from where you used to be to a new level. You can't continue being that wayward person that you used to be in every church you have been. You just go there, sit down, hallelujah. God wants you to begin to be up, come up spiritually. Apostle Paul said, you know whom you have learned from. So do what? Teach others. There is no man, no woman who will be sincere and honest serving God and God will never take care of him. Never. Because God does not break his covenant. He's not a covenant breaker. He takes care of his people. He sees you where you are. I shared with you that prayer is a signal that attracts heaven. Prayer is the satellite that shows where you are. Shows the heaven where you are. But today we don't pray. We know how to gossip. Talk, 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 talk is cheap. When you're persecuted, will you stand? When your brother or your sister is being persecuted, will you pray? If it is within your sphere of influence to say, stop persecuting people, you won't say because you think, if he goes down, I'll come up. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. You're looking for, for somebody to go down, so you come up, it doesn't work that way. Not in God's kingdom. That's not God's principles. Next. When you are persecuted, maintain patience and perseverance. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 3. Maintain patience and perseverance. I always say it. If you are not patient, you become a patient. If you are not patient, you become a patient. Maintain patience when you are handling people. I always remember this. Handle people as you may handle yourself. Look over your, look at your own problems before you open your mouth and talk about others. Don't pick on people's fault. Where love is thin, fall to become thick. But where love is thick, fall to become thin. We lack love, but we pretend to have love. Love is not saying, you know, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> it's be something more than that. Love put tears in your eyes when somebody is not well. Love put tears in your eyes when somebody is having problems. Love put tears in your eyes to cry unto God on behalf of other people. Love does not share in gossip. Love does not find fault unnecessarily. 
What do you sow, you reap? And that's why many families are going down. Because we choose not to follow God's way. When you are persecuted, be bold and speak for the word. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 2. Be bold. The Bible said the righteous will be as bold as a lion. Be bold. Of course, you can only be bold when you know that you are not guilty. When you are guilty, how can you be bold? That becomes foolishness. Be bold to speak for the word. Speak for the word of God. That bring about life. That bring about correction. That bring about joy. Be bold. Whatever you do, I always say it. Lies may be audible and loud. But I tell you, truth will at last prevail. You must know that. You might suppress the truth. Suppress it as much as you can. But I tell you, at last, the truth will prevail in life. When you are persecuted, be imitators of Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. Imitate Christ. Don't imitate man. The Bible told us that Jesus was taken to the slaughter to be killed. He opened not his mouth. He did not. Be imitators of Christ. Before I take any action in life, I will ask myself this question. Even before I make decision, if Jesus was to be in my shoes, what will he do? Before I make decision. Sometimes people think that Slow in making decisions, certain decisions, important decisions is lacking. It's not. You are weighing the options. Make sure that everything you do is in line with God's word. Not to hurt somebody. You know, we have people, they come and tell you something. When you say, shall I ask? They say, no, I don't want problem. Tomorrow they go back and say, I told pastor and pastor didn't do anything about it. Whichever way you go. They'll come and tell you something. It's okay, sister. Shall I ask? Shall I take action? They say, no, 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 I don't want problem. I don't want, I just let you know. The next moment, they go and tell somebody, I told pastor, pastor did nothing about it. And the other one will say, yalo, yalo, he won't do anything, what? He will tell you to pray. And it sounds correct. God hears our heart intentions, our heart beats more than he hears a voice. Whatever you think. But I urge you, think no evil about any man. Bear no grudge against any, any of your brothers and sisters. Be honest and sincere in your life. Stop deceiving yourself. Being spiritual is not being foolishly vocal. Being spiritual is not being, I suspect, I sense. This total nonsense. If you're spiritual, we know. Because your life would show it forth. Being spiritual is not... It's not shaking. God's people. It's time for us to be people whom God can be proud of. When you are persecuted, exercise faith, endurance. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 4, exercise your faith. Faith is not foolishness. Exercise faith and endure. Endure. The Bible told us also in Hebrew that after we have endured, we receive the blessings of God. Endure. India. I always ask myself this question. If somebody hurt me and I go and fight back, what is the difference? There's no difference. We two are the same. I must always show Christianity when I deal with people. It does not matter what, how that thing seems to be right or correct. I must first of all find out the truth. Because all that glitters are not gold. Every news you hear has two sides. When one, somebody talks, it sounds correct. But when you hear the other side, you'll be shocked. For the past 26 years of following the Lord, serving him overseas, I've learned a lot at his feet. I've learned a lot in handling people. And when we talk about handling people, we're not one particular people, different, diverse people with different ideas, educated and non-educated, high position, low position, middle position, I've handled them. And I can bear with them how people can behave. But so sad that mankind can be bought over. 
I thank God for his grace and mercy that his glory be given to him. Nobody will take God's glory in this church. Our glory is given to him because without him we can do nothing. So it's time for us to come out from deception and confusion. Thinking we know, we know nothing. When you're persecuted, don't be ashamed of the name of Christ. Don't be ashamed. Don't say, oh, is it because I'm following Christ? Then I have to back off. I'm no more following Christ. Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. He said, therefore, do not be ashamed. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Share with me. That's what he said. Share with me according to the gospel for the power of God. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. In verse 12 of the same place, it says, For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Yes, whatever I've committed into the hands of the Lord, he will keep it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you ashamed of it? You become ashamed of it when you begin to live the life of a backslider. When we cannot tap that, hey, who is talking to me? This person is a backslider. He had nothing to do with Christ anymore. He had come out of the will of God. A backslider don't need somebody to take knife and kill the other one. When you walk out of the will of God, when the words that come out of your mouth does not edify anymore, when you begin to find fault against brethren, something is already wrong. So, sir, the spirit is spreading wild. Even those who call themselves church leaders are easily bought over and deceived. So sad. When you are persecuted, feed in the word of God. Feed in God's word. Always feed. Eat that word. That's what keeps me. Eat it. The sense of all said, I treasure your word more than the very food I eat. Do you treasure God's word? Eat that word. Eat it. Thy word is a lamb on my feet and a light on my path. The entrance of your word makes the simple wise. God's word. Do you use God's word? Or you get many people don't read God's word. They don't read the Bible. They rather hear what gossipers will tell them. They don't read God's word. Only once, maybe once in two weeks, they open Psalms and read after they close. But they are willing to hear gossipers. Then after that, they come and prophesy. Or they go and tell them, I move in the spirit. Nothing is hidden. If you are a man or woman of God, you must know whom you follow. If a shepherd doesn't know his sheep, something is wrong with the shepherd. That's true. If a shepherd doesn't know the condition of his sheep, who is who? Something is wrong with the shepherd. The shepherd had a lot of touch with God. You have lost your touch with God. But the shepherd is not a judge. Shepherd is there to make the sheep feel comfortable. To receive unadulterated word of God. To eat it. To be an exemplary person to the sheep. In his words, in his action, in whatever he does. When you're persecuted, maintain compassionate heart. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 34. Be compassionate. Show compassion. Don't allow yourself to be used by Satan to say, how can they do this to me? I must go and fight. No. The Bible said our warfare is not a physical warfare. Put your knees down. Victory comes when you put your knees down. Show compassion. Even if you know what that person is doing, don't go and say, <laughs> You think I don't know. No need. There's no point. Be foolish unto Christ. And let them be foolish unto Satan. The worst fool they can be. Bible says Jesus knew what is a man. God's people. Bible is real. 
So stop pretending. When you're persecuted, lay aside every weight and keep your eyes on God. Hebrew chapter 2, verse 2 through 4. Lay aside everything. Keep your eyes on God. Otherwise, you become distracted. Do you know your persecutors want to distract you? They want to stop you from going forward. They want to pull you away from the divine path you're following. Keep your eyes off from every side attractions and fix your eyes on God. Keep on doing the good thing you've been doing. Focus on the Lord, not on the things at the side. Because they put all those rotten things by the side to attract you and make you to become distracted. Press on. If you are a servant of God, wherever you go, shout of hallelujah will be there. Not only in your church, not only outside. You'll be a man or woman of influence because you carry the influence of God. You show compassion. You don't fight battle to destroy people, but you fight battle to set them free from lying spirit, deception, manipulation. You're going to hang on it. And when you begin to hit devil at the head, what will happen? They will call you the king of flies. Remember they called Jesus Beelzebub because Jesus was hitting the, five, the hypocrites on the head. They said he must be king of flies, king of demons. It's time for us. Do, I always share this with you, self-examination. The life I'm living, is it what living? Is it like that Jesus Christ paid the price on the cross? Or am I deceived because of money? Do you know many people, even preachers, so-called men of God or women of God, can sell their spiritual birthright because of money? Oh, somebody will give them money, they condemn the other man, man of God. Oh, because they buy you food to eat, sit down, cross your leg and eat. Oh, they condemn the other one. You sell your spiritual birthright. Just because you want to have fellowship of the sinners, not fellowship of sins. If you fellowship with me and you hear me gossiping, quit. Don't come close to me anymore. Live for Jesus. You are called and chosen by God. Man didn't call you. Man, woman didn't choose you. Live right. Live right. Be, be sincere and honest. Be people whom God can be proud of. When you're persecuted, don't be afraid of the suffering or threat. I would like us to read this. Let's go to second and first, first Peter. First epistle of Peter, chapter 3. Look at verse 14. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed and do not be afraid of their threats nor be troubled. If you have to suffer because of the persecutors, don't be afraid or don't be troubled. Press on to God. Press on to God. It's so sad that people whom the Lord will use you to take care, they are the, one to, the first to take stone and stone on you. They are the first to pick up and throw. But listen, you might pick the mud and throw. You may miss your target, but your hands are already stained. You pick up the mark, you might miss your target, but your hands, fingers are already stained. We all are living in glass houses. Please don't throw stones. <laughs> if you're a man or woman of God, you're a child of God, if they persecute me today, they persecute you tomorrow. We are all living in glass houses. Don't throw stones. Next. When you are persecuted, don't think it strange. Many of us think it's strange when we are persecuted. We think it's strange. How come, why must it be me? What did I do? Well, if it's not you, who will it be me? Now, nobody wants to be persecuted. Yeah. Why, why is it me? Why must it, if it's not you, as long as you live righteously in Christ, you will be persecuted. Now look at what the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter again, <clears throat> chapter 4, 
Verse 12 through 17. Beloved, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 17. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. At those, some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may be, you may also be with a certain joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody, that's a gossiper, in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For a time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with, with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? This is a comforting portion of the scripture for those who are persecuted. Don't call it strange. We are warned not to be busybodies, gossipers, murderers, thieves. We are warned. But if you suffer for Christ, blessed be the name of the Lord. You are blessed. Press on. Don't let persecution stop you from following Christ. Don't let persecution stop you from doing what you're supposed to do for Christ. Don't let the evil men and women who choose the way of the world, as Apostle Paul said, Demas has left me and prefer the world now, not the world to come. Many will leave the ministry. It was prophesied very clearly that the falling away has begun. Many will go. It could be your best friend. And they're going to pretend. They're not going to tell they have fallen away. They pretend as if they would like to have you for social gathering. No more spiritual gathering anymore. Social. Come, let's eat. Did you hear about slum dog? All these things, they will talk about it. But they will not tell you something about Christ. They will try to send you everything concerning social things happening in the world. There are a lot of social things happening in China because of development coming and also in India. They like to forward, uh, send you all these things, but nothing about Christ. That's, if we are sensitive in the spirit, you will know that somebody has gone off. Calling you is only talk about social things, but not spiritual things. When they say, let us pray, they say, and if they pray, it's a dry prayer. And if you persist to live right, they'll begin to hate you. They think you're, you are now becoming fanatical. That's the signs, the symptoms of those who are out of Christ. They begin to operate in social work, social things. No more of Christ. Next. When you're persecuted, the Bible said, have a good conscience. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, have a good conscience. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it says, having a good conscience, that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better, if it is the will of God, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bible said, have a good conscience. It is good for you to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Today, when you do good, you will find somewhere say, Yeah, I mean, he did it because maybe he has been also enjoying all these things. But love does not come in abundance, love comes in lacking. To prove your love is in lacking, it's not in abundance. Jesus made it clear. He was standing right there when they were collecting an offering, and they said that woman came with two fadens. She gave out of her lacking. And Jesus said she had given more than everybody, anybody else because she gave all that she has. So then when you do it, if you reach out to somebody because you want them never to be mocked, they can go against you. God's people, you don't need to be afraid. If the Lord be with you, you, don't have, you have nothing to fear. As long as you're living right, have good conscience. Good conscience. Apostle Paul made it clear. In the book of Acts 24, he said it. 
that in all things I maintain good conscience. Good conscience. Do you maintain good conscience? That's the most important thing. When you are persecuted, sanctify the Lord in your heart. In the book of 1, Cor 1, 1 Peter, rather, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter 3, 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. This is very important. Church, it is important for all of us. When you are persecuted, it is not our right to begin to be rude to people. Don't be rude. Even though the person who persecutes you come to throw that mud on your face, don't be rude. Bible says, be meek with reverence. Sometimes people think that being humble is a weakness. Humility is not stupidity. And the day you know you're humble, you're already not humble anymore. Because every day you must continue to be humble. Regardless of the height of your achievement, keep on being humble. Be an exemplary person. Reaching out to people. But don't ever tap on people's weakness. I always warn this. In our morning devotion, this is what I will tell them. Don't tap on people's weakness. It's very common among people. They know this is your weakness, they tap on it. Don't tap on people's weakness. Rather, strengthen their hand to come out from their weakness. It does not matter how spiritually you are. It doesn't matter how much you know about the Bible. It doesn't matter. People don't want to know how much you know. They want to know how much you care. We don't care how, you, how much you know. How much you care. Do you care? Do you care? That's what we want to know. How much you care. It's not how much knowledge you know. We don't care about how much you know. That's what the Bible says. Knowledge pops off. How much you care. You go through a lot of things in life. Church, to be a pastor is not easy. But it's an honor that God called you to serve him. A useless man, hopeless man, apostle, apostle, among the thief, among the useless people, he's the chief. But God chose him. And he did not abuse it. That's my joy. He did not abuse it. He couldn't walk in that path. If only we can thank God. In order to be grateful to God for choosing you, is to remain faithful. That's all. To your friends, loyalty. To God, commitment and obedience. To your spouse, faithfulness. To the younger generation, good example. To yourself, self-respect. That's all. If you can keep these principles, you'll be the person God wants you to be. You don't need to shed tears in the public to make people to know how much broken you are inside for the sinfulness of mankind. But put your knees down, cry to God. Be an instrument of righteousness, wherever you are. When people are crying, cry with them. When they rejoice, rejoice with them. That is the principle of Christianity. When you're persecuted, commit your soul unto God. Don't go and fight. Don't go and try to defend yourself. I want to prove. I want to tell you I didn't do it. No. That's why when I talk to people, the moment you become defensive, poor. no matter how you, how you claim to be spiritual, to me, it's zero. You don't need to be defensive. Let your yeah be yeah, your no be no. That's all. I did not do it. That's it. You don't need to say, ask them to say, other person, no need. I didn't do it. That's all. If you take that word, fine. If you don't take that word, that's your problem. Because I know I will not lie to you. I detest it. And I wouldn't like to have a friend who's a liar. God's people. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Commit your souls to doing good. Commit your soul 
When people want to control your life, they couldn't control you, they say you're no good. When they want to abuse, fund, you say no, oh, they say, oh, you're like that, you're like that. Because people know what they will be or what they are, then they thought that another person is like that. That's why we see suspicion today. You say, I move in discerning of the spirit. You move in nothing, you move in suspicion. A man is known, a man is known by what he would do if he knows that no one will find it out. That's it. Why should mankind sell his spiritual birthright? Just because of muscle of bread. Why? Why must mankind lie to cover up? Don't you know that Satan is the father of liars and you are one of his disciples if you lie? Why must you manipulate people thinking that you're smart? You're not smart. Rather, you are digging your grave to fall in. Because all you do, the eyes of the Lord is open. You may hide it from me, I may hide it from you, but you cannot hide it from God, and I cannot hide it from God. God wants us to change our ways. This year is 2009. Change your ways, be fruitful, be responsible unto God. There are ways to serve the Lord. No one man can read the whole world. Absolute no. But are we ready? God is not looking for those who are available. He's looking for those who are ready. Ready is not just because you can preach. Ready that your life. The best evangelism is lifestyle evangelism. Lifestyle. That's the best evangelism. It's not what you preach. It's not how much you know. You know this from this story. No, no, no. It's your lifestyle. Your words. Can people trust your word? Can people trust what you say? Can people see Christ in you, the hope of glory? Even as Apostle Paul wrote to the Church of Romans, in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 14, he said, put on Christ. Put on Christ. Wherever you are, put on Christ. There are people who can speak very nicely, flatter you. Their words are like butter, smooth like butter. But I tell you, those words are more poisonous than viper's bite. When you're persecuted. Will you maintain Christ-like character? As Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Philippians chapter 4. Will you maintain Christ-like character? No matter how you're provoked. Church, I know what it means to be provoked. I know what it means to be angered. I know what it means to, to, for people to try to sit on your head. Well, will you maintain humility and be under control? The Bible talks about spirit of control. I mean, self-control. Self-control. Control yourself. Don't allow your emotions to ride over you. Control yourself. If you don't control yourself, something will control you. And you bring shame to those who respect you. Because there are many people there who respect you very much. But the day you lose your cool, they'll be disappointed and devastated. It's time for us to begin to think about the way we behave, the way we talk, the way we act. Even that SMS, email you want to send. What about letting it bless somebody? What about letting it be a blessing to that person who receives it? Instead of being a whack. We must maintain our love, peace, joy, and faith during persecution. We must maintain it. Maintain joy. Maintain peace. Maintain compassion. No matter how. We are Christ followers. We are not man's followers. We are Christ followers. Ask yourself, what will Jesus do if Jesus were to be in your position at that moment when you are persecuted? What did he do when he was persecuted? We don't remember that. Rather, we try to go. We think that if we don't react, it means we are weak. It's not true. That's why when Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, and also 1 Corinthians 10, 23, he said, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought down by his power. 
self-control. No matter what, no matter how. Because people cannot be trusted, they think that others will not be trusted. Because they know they can commit sin if nobody is watching. They think you will do the same. They forget to know there are men and women of God who had covenant with God. If you have covenant with God, we'll never go against it. Because God is not a covenant breaker. Psalms 89 verse 34. God said, I will not break my covenant. And you can take that step. For you to see a new thing happening in your life, not only to ask God, I want to be your friend. Before you become a friend of God, you must have covenant relationship with God. Covenant relationship with God. Lord, I want to have covenant relationship with you. So that I will not put it to disgrace. God's people, the Lord is speaking to you and I. The character, the attitude that we need to show during persecution. Your attitude, my attitude will determine our altitude. Our attitude will determine our altitude in situation and circumstance. My prayer is this, that every one of us, every one of us will live for Jesus. That you will not be deceived to miss heaven. Anything can happen any time from now. That you and I will not miss heaven. I'm not telling you to go back and say, okay, I don't need to go to school. I don't need to go to work. Jesus is coming tomorrow. I didn't say that. But I'm telling you, just be ready. In the book of Amos, very clearly the Bible declared. It said, because you are going to meet your people, prepare to meet your God. Are we prepared to meet the Lord? If he comes now, we need to be conscious of what we're doing. Conscious of how we talk to people, how we deal with people, how we reach out to people, and how we also relate to people. Consciousness. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to go through all this thing tomorrow and cast out. God's people. That is why when you are persecuted, don't forget the nine g- g- fruit of the Spirit. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25, the fruit of the Spirit should be evident and evidently manifested in our lives during the time of persecution. Let the fruit come forth alive. Because those who are persecuting you want to stir you up to anger. They want you to go against God's will. They want to distract you from the focus you have on Christ. Tell the devil, no. I always tell people, learn to say no to people without feeling guilty. No to sin without feeling guilty. If my relationship with God will make my so-called friend to be angry, so be it. Cut it off. I'm not interested. Cut it off. God's people. God is calling us to be changed and transformed. Don't get deceived. Talk is cheap. Don't be bought over with money. Money can buy you what money can buy you. Money cannot buy you what money cannot buy you. Money can buy you book, but money cannot buy you brains. Money can buy you a building, but money cannot buy you a home. You make the home. Money can buy you food, but money cannot buy you appetite. Money can buy you a largely bed, $20 million bed, but money cannot buy you sleep. You must remember that. Money can buy you a Bible, but money cannot buy you salvation. Don't be deceived just because people are tired of following the Lord. First of all, look at the family of those people, what they are like. A man who cannot rule over his family, how can he rule the church of God? Look at their their family, what it looks like. Then they can go around parading. Maybe son is living in the moon, daughter-in-law is living in 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 the Pluto. Grandchildren are living in mass. And you come to tell us, what are you telling? It's time for us to get out from the mess. Follow the Lord. Don't get deceived. When your friendship between you and I goes against God's word, I'll cut it off. Straight. That's me. Our friendship, whatever we do, must be in line with God's word. When love is pure, then it can grow deep. When love is not pure, it cannot grow deep. So if you want your love to grow deep, 
make it pure with one another. Persecution will come. End time offenses. When God gave me this message, I tell you to, I begin to wonder. Because whenever I get a message that will run into part one, two, three, I know something is in the air. Then I get myself prepared. Say, so, Lord, I surrender myself to you. But I would never bow down to demons. But I bow my knee before your throne and I will stand tall against all power of demons. I will never budge. I will never agree with devils. And I will never follow him. And I will never have relationship or fellowship with the council of sinners. Because my Bible tells me in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. I will not. Unless you bow to the throne of Jesus, then okay. Unless you get back to the Lord and say, I've I repent, forgive me, then we move on again. Otherwise, no, I don't agree. Because little living, we're living the whole lump. There are a lot of things you don't know about people. What you know is what you're supposed to know, but there are a lot of things you don't know. That's why God's people come out from the shells, embrace Jesus, follow his footsteps which he had led before us, and let us worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Persecution need to bring promotion. Persecution need to strengthen you. Persecution need to uplift you spiritually. Persecution need to make you strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. That's God's word. When you hear the voice of God, you know how to know.